So if you're a whiskey drinker, you're definitely going to know a little bit about the Scotch whiskey that we're going to do a review of today, McCallum whiskey. Super excited to have Andy Bunting down. He is the brand ambassador for McCallum here in Australia. And uh, yeah, let's just get stuck straight into it. What do you Fantastic. think? Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for having me, George. Thanks for having me again. Um, yeah, we've got a, a wonderful single malt whiskey from the Speyside region of Scotland. Um, called the Macallan, which was founded in 1824 and has been making some exceptional whiskies since then. Yeah, awesome. And um, it's a very, very popular uh, whiskey, especially here at 18th Amendment Bar. Um, can you tell me why, like it, compared to, you obviously work with a few other different brands of whiskies. What, what in your opinion makes Macallan so special? Uh, look, it's, it's a fantastic whiskey. It's, you know, you, you know what you're getting with the Macallan, you know you're going to get some quality. Uh, and that comes from the, the processes that we put in place to ensure that you know, every bottle you get is going to be uh, the highest quality. Um, we, um, you know, it's definitely known as a luxurious brand as well, all around the world. Uh, and in fact, we look at some of the whiskies that we produce um, to have the direct competitors for market share as being brands like Rolex, Aston Martin, uh, Louis XIII Cognac, uh, because uh, by value, we produce more single malt whiskey than any other uh, distillery in Scotland. It's crazy. It's uh, I, I worked at a bar in Melbourne that I'm not going to name recently that uh, did a little bit of work for them that sold a bottle of Macallan for about $110,000, which kind of blew me away. And th there are people that are prepared to pay astronomical amounts of money for, for these whiskies. E exactly. Uh, our company uh, here in Australia recently sold a 72-year-old Macallan for $150,000, but that's not even close to what the record is. So. Uh, on the secondary market and in auctions, uh, whiskey can definitely uh, have a, a lot of dividends if you're a serious collector. And uh, recently, a Macallan whiskey sold for 1.5 million pounds wow. at auction. Are these guys drinking it, or they're just holding on to it? Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, it's probably never going to be drunk. Um, <laughs> but you know, this one was distilled in 1926 and uh, 60 years old, and a, you know, very small batch that it came from, and and all the ones from that batch. Um, have been setting a lot of records and, and each time one goes to auction it, it ends up bringing in a lot more money than the last one did. Yeah. Unfortunately we're not going to get to try those <laughs> ones today but what, what have I didn't you got bring for any us today? <laughs> um, so uh, Macallan while it is um, a luxurious single model I don't like to use the word expensive because it's a very subjective thing uh, it is a very luxurious uh, brand. Um, we brought in the, the Trilogy range which is three 12 year old whiskies. Uh, the reason we do three 12 year old whiskies is it shows uh, the different influence that different wood gives to whiskies. Uh, we spend more on cast than any other single malt distillery in Scotland. In fact, we've got a gentleman that works for us, his name's Stuart McPherson, and his official title is Master of Wood. And he goes from Scotland to Spain and Scotland to America to source the best cast for us because as we know from, you know, if you're a bartender and making cocktails or, you know, even if you're cooking a steak at home, the better ingredients that you use, the better outcome you're gonna have at the end. Um, unless you're not very good at cooking steaks, when, <laughs> <laughs> you, you might not get that. But um, as I said, we, we spend more on wood than, than any other malt distillery. Um, and in fact, we've got a few things that we call the six pillars of the Macallan, which define the type of spirit that we produce. So I'm gonna, just going to run through them quickly because awesome. uh, it, it's important to, to show <clears throat> uh, the style of whiskey that we make. So the first pillar is Easter Elkie's house, and it's the spiritual homes of Macallan. Uh, it was built in 1700 and it lies right in the centre of Macallan Estate, which is 436 acres, right in the heart of Speyside, um, which is in the north uh, east of Scotland. Uh, and it's actually got the most distilleries um, for the region within Scotland. Um, we've also got five miles of beautiful salmon fishing on the River Spey as well. So, you know, if you're a bit of a keen fisherman and you like your whiskey, definitely come and visit us at the Macallan Distillery. Uh, Easter Rookie's House actually features four times on every bottle and, and on the packaging as well, it's so important to us. The second pillar of the Macallan um, is uh, our curiously small stills. Now these are the shortest stills in, in Speyside, not the shortest in Scotland. Um, and a shorter still helps to produce a, a more rich, oily style of spirit. In fact, they're that famous, they're on the old Scottish 10 pound banknote as well before they changed to the, the plastic money that we use today. The third pillar is our finest cut. Now when we talk about the cut, we talk about the amount of the final distillation that we keep to put into our casks. Some distilleries will keep 20, 22%. We keep as little as 16%. Just so we, we get that rich, oily style of spirit that we want. Uh, a, a heavier style of spirit will allow for a, a longer maturation. 
So that's where our fourth pillar comes in, which is our exceptional oak casts. I've already mentioned it a couple of times that you know we do have this amazing cast program led by um, our master of wood, Stuart McPherson. Um, and you know, 90% of the casts that come from Spain from having uh, sherry in them before, previously, will come to the McAllen or to Edrington Group as well. So uh, the fifth pillar of the McAllen is the natural colour. We don't add any artificial colouring to our whiskies to make them look older. Um, that all comes down to the, the master blending team to ensure that we have consistency from, uh, from vatting to vatting of our whiskies. And the final pi pillar of the McAllen is the, the peerless spirit. As I said, um, you know, we're well known worldwide for having uh, an exceptional whiskey. Excellent. So um, let's get... Yeah, let's oh, try Sorry, something. let's get started. <laughs> I tried these, uh, I think it was last year, Andy came down and did a whiskey and chocolate masterclass that Ooh. blew me away. I, I did not ever think that you could match chocolate with whiskey. Uh, yeah, did you just think up that or? Uh, it's, it's no secret that I love my whiskey and it's, it's a, another um, well-known secret of mine that, that I do like some chocolate as well. And me too. The, the biggest problem for me with chocolate is um, I can't just have one piece, I've got to have the whole thing. So I tend not to eat a lot of chocolate, but um, whiskey can pair really well with a lot of things. It can pair well with, as we said, chocolates, uh, cheeses as well after, after dinner, uh, steaks, meats, uh, charcuterie, I always mess up that one, charcuterie boards. Um, and also cigars as well can be another thing you can match your whiskies with after dinner, so. You guys need to buy some McCallum and try it. Trust me, it was amazing. So, or we might have to just book in another session. We might have to do another one. <laughs> All right, let's give it a try. So with this one, we're, we're starting with the softer style of the McAllen Trilogy range, and this is the, the triple cast matured. It used to be called the Fine Oak, but we've recently changed the name when we changed the packaging as well. So we put a anti-counterfeiting device on the top of the bottles here. As you can see, it still has the cork closure within there, it just, the, uh, what it shows is whether the bottle has been opened before. You can't actually close it to make it look like when, when you first bought that bottle. From being the peerless spirit and, and also being such a luxurious brand, it is, does open us up to counterfeiting, which is a, a horrible part of the industry. Um, and it happens quite a lot with, you know, with, with expensive Japanese whiskies, expensive cognacs, and, and even wines as well, quite famous. Wow. Well, you know you're good if uh, you need to do that, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so this one is a, is a triple cask matured, it's a 12 year old, and it's a, it's a marriage of 12 different styles of cask. Sorry, not 12. Three different styles of 12 year old whiskies. Uh, we've got European oak, which has had sherry in it before, American oak, which has had sherry in it before, so both of those are coming from Spain, and it's also got some ex-bourbon casks in there as well. Okay, and what type of sherry uh, were these casks? Oloroso casks. Oloroso. Yep. Like... Predominantly Oloroso that we use. Yep. I must say I'm a fan of anything that's been in a sherry cask. I do have that sort of sweeter tooth. Um, I, I really like it. <laughs> so th with this one, it's predominantly ex-bourbon cask. That's where you're getting a lot of rich vanilla coming through. You know, even kind of a, a creme brulee style of vanilla. It's got a little bit of spice as well that's coming through from the, the European oak. Um, but this one's definitely not so much an entry level, but as, the, as, a, as your palate goes, this one's definitely a lot softer, uh, more approachable from what the traditional Macallan style is, which is the sherry oak. Yeah, it, it definitely is one that I find to offer to customers that come in and, and say, oh, I want to try whiskey. I normally don't try whiskey. This is definitely a go-to for me. Um, and we've had no complaints ever. I'll normally say something like, if you don't like it, I'll take it back and get you something else and none have come back. It never happens, Thank does you. it? Yeah, no, it's good, so. Okay, Andy, I really enjoyed the triple cask. What have you got for me next? Fantastic, let's move on to the double cask. Uh, so this one's a little step up in the way of the flavor profile. So it becomes a little bit richer, a little bit more bolder. And what we've done with this one is, um, where the triple cask matured had ex-bourbon cast in it. So um, they've held bourbon in it before then come over to us and we put our, our single malt spirit into there. Um, this one doesn't have those bourbon. So it's European and American oak ex-sherry casks. <laughs> So where there was a lot of vanilla with the triple cask, this one the vanilla's dialed down a bit. So it still uses American oak, which is high in vanillins. Um, but because it's been toasted rather than uh, a heavy char, which bourbon casks are, um, the vanillas are dialed down a bit. Um, you get a bit more spice coming through with this one as well, and also some nuts and honey and, and flavours like that. 
Again, as you see, the, the color's starting to get a little bit darker. We don't add any artificial tint enhancers to our whiskey in the E150A. Um, so this one all comes naturally from the cask. And again, it's, it's a vatting of two styles of cask, which are all a minimum of 12 years old. So what we're doing is we're, we're taking on a bit of a journey. Mm. Yeah, I like that too. Mm. <laughs> Find this one, you get in it, like a little bit of dry chocolate on the back of the palate as well, and you know I think that's how I, I decided to do a, a whiskey and chocolate pairing. Was yeah. I was just sitting there watching some TV one day and having whiskey and eating some chocolate, and they just tend to to pair. You end up with the oils from the chocolate on your on your palate, and the whiskey comes and it combines with those and changes the flavour a little bit. Yeah. And I, uh, since I did that masterclass with you, I actually do have chocolate and whiskey <laughs> a lot at home, and you can use different types. I find that if for personally for myself, if, if it is something that it's like, I, I do like whiskies that are heavily like cherry bomb style. I like using a, a darker, higher content of cacao that a little bit more bitter to balance out as well. And so don't just go out there and buy one block of chocolate, just treat yourself to a few different ones and have a bit of a play around because it's, uh, it's really, really good. Sounds like a great way of doing it. Yeah. And when you are doing your matching, you gotta look for complementary or, or contrasting flavors tend to, to work the best way. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a, a whiskey and chocolate session uh, online or something one day, so. All right, well, shall we move on to the next one? Let's do it. Yeah, okay. Smashing We're being wrong. responsible today. That's right. <laughs> So uh, what do we have? What's the third in the lineup that we're going to try today? So the third one is, is part of the trilogy series that we have is the Macallan Sherry Oak. I love the sound of the cork yeah. coming out of a bottle. So where the double cask was predominantly American oak ex sherry cask with some European oak, this one we flipped it around. So this one's more of a traditional Macallan style of whiskey. So, you know, if you talk to your grandfather that, that drank a lot of whiskey in his heyday, uh, it would have been a, a lot of Macallan, I'm sure. Um, this is what he would remember as, as being a, a traditional style of Macallan whiskey. So definitely uh, the, the boldest of the three that we're going to drink, the, the richest, because it does have that sherry influence. So as I said, American oak was, is predominantly uh, vanilla flavoured. Um, it's from natural sugars that occur within the wood. Uh, it does have a, a little bit of uh, lemon citrus and coconut as well. Uh, European oak tends to, to be a lot more bolder with that one. So. Uh, instead of lemon citrus, you'll be getting orange citrus, uh, some baking spices, and also some, some dried fruits as well. Uh, and that's just flavours that are naturally occurring within the, within the wood. Excellent. And so McCullen has always used cherry casks then pretty much from, from the start? Or? Yes, yeah. yeah. That's one of the it's, things that they're most famous for is for their use of yeah. sherry casks. That's awesome, because we see a lot of the distilleries uh, or the, the distillers nowadays that are doing finishing off in sherry casks, but these guys have been doing it. Always. <laughs> yes, we, do, we don't do any finishes at the Macallan. Um, well, they, they are fantastic um, uh, cast finish whiskies. Uh, they do add an extra depth to, to whiskies. Uh, Macallan is known for just doing that full term maturation. Yeah. If we have a cast that's not very active, it's not giving a lot of flavour and, and aroma and, and colour to a whiskey, we might re rack it into a, into a first fill cask again just to help with that maturation period going along. Awesome. And I guess it's probably not a, a cheap way to mature either because. Uh, uh, Sherry really isn't drank as much as say bourbon and American whiskey. So uh, are sherry barrels a lot more expensive than say a, an ex Jack Daniels or? Well, that's a that's a really yeah. great question. So they they are a lot more expensive. So for an ex Jack Daniels, as you said, so an ex bourbon or, or American whiskey cask, normally sells for about 150 to 250 US dollars for a 200 liter cask, depending on what grade it is. So obviously the the better. Uh, distilleries it's coming from, the better quality of the cask, the more expensive it is. Whereas you're looking at a, a 500 litre cask, whether it be a, a butt or a punch in just different shapes, normally sell for a thousand euro coming over from yeah. Spain. So there's that massive difference. And, you know, and that kind of goes along with, you know, it, it is a business, it is a company. So you know, that's why our, our whiskies tend to be a, a higher price range than, than other 12 year olds in the market. I guess if you want quality though, you know, you've got to pay for it. Exactly. Uh, as in with anything. Um, I'm going to try it, I'm trying it again. Ah, oh, that's my favourite. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to hang back a little bit afterwards because I am driving because I'm not going to pour this one out. <laughs> <laughs> 
I did, I did not know it was your favourite, so I poured you a little bit more with that one. Yeah, so it's beautiful. It's just really sort of decadent and yeah. What what is the ABV? These so ones? these are all forty percent. Yeah, excellent. It's just so smooth. Hmm. And as far as the the barrels go, how many times can you use a barrel? So for example, if you're aging it for 12 years, is that it? They get rid of the barrel or can you continue using it afterwards? Um, you can continue to use a barrel afterwards. Um, we'll, we'll only use a barrel a couple of times. Yep. So if we're maturing something over 18 years old, we might use what's called a refill or a second fill barrel. So when you're thinking about with wood, with impacting its flavour and, and colour and aroma onto a whiskey, you've got to think of it like a tea bag. And it might sound like a funny analogy, um, but the first time you use a tea bag, you get a lot of rich, that, that tea flavour and aroma, lots of colour coming out. The second time you use it, you don't get as much of that. And it takes a lot longer to get those flavours into the, the water when you're making your tea. It's exactly the same when we're talking about casks and, and single malt whisky. So if we want to have a, a really long maturation period, if we want to do, you know, instead of a 12 year old, we might want to do a, a 72 year old like we recently sold. Um, we will put into a refill cast just because it, it's not going to age a whiskey too quickly. There is a point when, when a whiskey will start to go bad in a cask and we, we really don't want that at all. So that's when a, a refill cask will be used. After that, we will on sell them to Speyside Cooperage. They'll recoup them and, and other distilleries will have the chance of, of buying an ex sherry barrel as well, European oak. Yeah. Well, I'm very happy that you've come down. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to say my cheers pleasure. again. Cheers, yes. And, uh, I would love to invite you to come down and, and do another session in the future um, because you guys have a lot of different spirits and, and liqueurs at, at Spirits Platform. Um, guys, if you're looking to buy any of these amazing whiskies, Spirits Platform, uh, places like Paramount, ALM and so forth for our American viewers and a lot of the, the viewers that we have over in the UK, get on board, buy some Macallan. I highly, highly recommend it and uh, cheers. We'll, See you next time on Let's Talk Drinks. And please subscribe, like, comment. If you, I'd love to know what your favourite one of these. This is my favourite, the last one, the sherry. Um, and once again, thank you.